In this video, we're going to go through how you can use Copilot to generate DAX measures in Power BI. We're going to go through how to enable it, some useful prompts that you can use, as well as some limitations and considerations to bear in mind if you want to use this. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Copilot is a new feature that lets you use language models in Power BI to help users or developers explore their data. Copilot was a feature that was announced alongside the Microsoft Fabric, and it lets you ask natural questions to your data to answer key questions, give summaries, and build entire reports all through these simple questions. As of now, not all of the Copilot features are available yet in Power BI. So today we're going to cover just one of the features for Copilot that is available for you to use now, which is the quick measure suggestions, which lets you generate DAX measures through simple natural language questions. So here's a Power BI report that I prepared, which just has a simple set of tables for the Northwind data sets. We have some information here like the orders that were made, how much they were, the categories of the different products that are being sold, when they're being sold, and the calendar table, which is something that we use for time intelligence purposes, and a measure table, which we use or we will use to kind of manage and organize our measures. To start using Copilot, you will need to click quick measure from here or create a new measure using quick measure and you will see the options here suggestions with copilot now if this is grayed out to you that's because you have to enable certain features in a couple of different places for this to work so the first place that you would want to make sure it's turned on is in the option settings here in power bi desktop you would go to options yeah. So from the option settings here, you'll need to go to preview feature and just make sure that quick measure suggestions is enabled. You also want to make sure that the Q&A feature is enabled somewhere here because it needs to use a Q&A to be able to process the natural language questions that you put or use in your report. Once those two things are enabled, you might have to enable some features as well on your tenants. And that's because Copilot uses AI or it processes it's your data in a data center within the US and you need to give RBI the ability to export or take that out of the geography where you're from. If you're in the US, this shouldn't be a problem. However, if you're outside of the US like me, is based in the UK, you have to explicitly enable this from your admin portal. So you'll find your admin portal from your Power BI service here. Here I am in my Power BI uh, service tenant. If you go to settings, you'll go to admin portal. This is where you'll find all the different settings that you can enable or disable. We'll look for something called quick measure suggestions. You just need to make sure that both of these are turned on. So this one is enabled, allow quick measure suggestions, as well as this option, allow user data to leave their geography. So in this case, if you're working with sensitive information and you want to comply with GDPR rules, or if you have some restrictions towards sending or receiving your data from different geographical locations, it's probably best not to use this feature. Now, once all of those settings are enabled, you should be able to use the suggestions with Copilot from Power BI Desktop over here. So from here, you will notice that it's almost pretty much the same as the quick measure suggestions. However, it seems to be powered by Copilot. So most likely in the back end, it's also using some additional AI features to kind of guess what you are trying to ask. So let's start by asking it some natural language questions and see what it returns. So I'm going to type here, give me the sum x of or order details multiplied by quantity. So this is referring to order unit price multiplied by quantity. 
And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to generate the measure that I typically create called sales, which gets the total sales from all the orders within the Northwind data sets by multiplying the unit price against quantity. Typically, I'd write this as a DAX myself. However, I want to see if Copilot will be able to generate this easily for me without me having to write any DAX code. So if you hit generate here, so first of all, what you will notice when I was typing and when I was finished typing, Copilot or Power BI understands the context of a few things that I write here. So for example, when I was saying unit price multiplied by quantity, it's auto filled and underlined it, which means that it is referring to something in my data set. When I hit generate at the bottom here, it will give you suggested measures as well as how it derived that answer the preview of that answer, as well as the DAX codes that it would write. So here we are, it's showing me it looks like the right way to uh, multiply the unit price and quantity to do the calculation. It understood that I wanted a sum X of these values. So if I want and I am happy with this DAX code, I will simply just hit add. And what it will do is it will just go to my data model. Here it's called measure. So we can just customize this a little bit and just call this sales. And we're going to change this into a currency because we want this to be pounds. And then we'll just drag it in here as a card. And there you go. So you have your sales, which is what I would typically write, but written for us using Copilot. Now you can use the cells like you normally would with a normal measure. So we can put it in a bar chart, for example, if you want to see the sales by different categories, you just do it like this. So I'm just going to add some data labels here and I just, and that's because I want to refer to this in a little bit. I'm going to turn on data labels and I'm going to say for the values. Just give me like this, so no decimal places and just the values. So this total will be 1.3 million. Now let's go back to the co-pilot stuff and let's try to generate something else. So I want sales. Let's say we want to add some more details to our, our question. So let's say we want to get the sales, but only for a certain category or for a certain country. Now it takes a little bit of understanding of what data you have in your data model and how they're related. But if you've got a pretty good data model to start with, the suggestions that you will get here will be a lot more accurate to what you need. So in this case, I added and I enabled the label so that we can compare what the value of the measure will look like once we have generated it. So in this case, let's try to get the total sales of just a category. So let's say seafood. So sales where category name is seafood. So as you can see, it recognized a few things here. It understood what category name is. It understood what sales we're referring to and what the seafood or what the category name is. So if we hit generate here, let's see if this will give us the right results. So it looks like it's using my sales measure, which is right. And then it's doing the category name filter. Let's just hit show more. Let's see if that's correct. 141,623. So it looks like it is correct. So here we go. So I've just generated that measure now. So I'm just going to call the seafood sales. So if we just drag it in here as a measure, there we go. So that should match up with the value that we have here in the label and verifying the results of the measures that you generate using Copilot is super important just because it can give you anomalous results depending on how you set up your model or even the prompts that you give it. So it's super important that you understand DAX or that you understand what it's writing and what it's returning before you start using it. There are a bunch more other prompts that you can use. So let's go through a few more examples so that you can see what other things are possible with the co-pilot stuff. So let's say we want to get the average price of a certain category. So let's say average unit price of condiments. 
So it will give you for every single order where there are condiments, it will just give you the unit price for that category, which is really, really interesting. So you can see that it will give you a certain value here. Let's try to do another one. Maybe we want to get, let's see, the top three sales by category. If we hit generate, you will see, okay, so it wasn't able to generate us anything. So let's see, it's probably because we need to be more specific with something here. So top three sales by category name. Here we go. So it's given me the first three, which is the ones at the top here in my bar chart, beverages, dairy products, and meat and poultry. And that is exactly what I'm looking for. And as you can see, without writing any DAX code, it's created a ranking for me. All I had to do was ask simple questions here in this Copilot box. Now that you know how to use Copilot, let's talk about some of the limitations and considerations to think about, which we touched on a little bit earlier. The first thing is all about data privacy. As I mentioned before, because Copilot is powered by AI language models, these models are and they live in US data centers, which means that if you want your queries to be processed, it needs to be sent to these data centers in the US and then spit the, the information back to you. Now, if you have requirements where you want to keep your data in house or in the same geography that you are working in, this probably isn't the best solution. So if you're working with sensitive data that requires you to keep your data within your geographical location, it's probably best for you to first check with your business to make sure that you are able to do this with the data that you're working with. The second, as I mentioned earlier, is to always validate your DAX. So while Copilot and Quick Measure Suggestions give you a shortcut way to just generate DAX quickly, it's not a replacement for not knowing DAX at all. And in fact, it makes as developers, it makes my life a lot easier and faster just because I don't need to type and know all of the syntax that I need. I understand the basic concepts of DAX and how it works. So I know when, for example, a DAX measure that it's suggested isn't going to give me the results that I need. So you still need to know this um, and not always just rely on what the suggested measures uh, give to you. And that's really it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you can now understand and see how you can start using the suggestions with Copilot in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I have to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page here you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.